Okay, so, so thanks a lot for, for uh, letting me speak at this uh, conference and also thanks a lot to you for, for coming. I, I realize it's the last hour and you must all be uh, pretty tired. So I, I try to not give a too hard uh, talk. And also I have to announce that at the end my talk will be a little bit um, experimental in the sense that I, I cannot answer the main question I, I raise. Anyway, let me, let me uh, tell you what the talk is about. So the, the talk is about uh, graph complexes. Uh, which have been, uh, yeah, maybe not introduced, but at least uh, popularized by Maxim Konsevich. Uh, so, so graph complexes in general are uh, complexes, so vector spaces, graded vector spaces with a differential, where Excuse me? He thinks that he introduced. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So there's several, so some of them you introduced, and I have to say in my defense that I, I, I titled my paper Maxim Konsevich's Graph Complex and something. So, 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 I, I, <laughs> but, but um, uh, yes, yeah, so, so, so the complexes I'm, I'm going to speak about today were introduced by, by Maxim Konsevich. So, uh, so uh, these, these complexes in, in general are, so the underlying vector spaces are, are spaces of linear combinations or of series of certain isomorphism classes of graphs. And, and then you can put a differential on these spaces, and the differential is usually defined by either contracting an edge or dually by, by splitting a vertex. Edge contraction or vertex splitting. And in, in the literature, there's a, there's a whole zoo of, of such graph complexes because there, there are a lot of different types of graphs you can take. You can take ribbon graphs or ordinary graphs or directed acyclic graphs or, or otherwise decorated graphs. And, and uh, these classes will give you, will give you uh, different uh, complexes a priori. I will talk today about the, the simplest version where you just have ordinary uh, uh, graphs without any decoration. And that was these, these types of complexes were uh, introduced by, by uh, Maxim Konsevich. So let me, let me give you a, a little bit more precise definition. Let me define a Z, let's say gra NK, the set of graphs. So, so not isomorphism classes of graphs, set of, of graphs. And I require uh, that they are connected. And, and the vertices are at least two valent. And I, I say that the vertex set are the numbers from maybe, if I, if I may change it, make a capital N because I will use a lowercase n later, the numbers from 1 to n, so you have n numbered vertices. And k directed edges. So each each edge is just a pair of numbers. So you have a list of k pairs of, of numbers, and this is what, what I call a graph. And now. Let's also uh, assign to each such graph a, a degree. And uh, the degree, of course, this is just a set, but the degree will be used later when I, when I construct a vector space spanned by, formally spanned by these things. So the degree of, of a graph 
this is uh, some number n, which, which I, I fix, n times number of vertices minus 1 minus n minus 1 times the number of edges. So some number little n, which is a degree of every vertex, times the number of, of uh, vertices minus 1, uh, minus um, number of edges times the degree minus n minus 1, so this is the degree of one edge. Then you have, a, you have an action. So this is, this is n for some n. Then small is equal to n typical. Possibly not equal to n capital. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's like for E n operator. Yes, yeah, so this n is a dimension, if you wish. These are, these are, these are vacuum graphs in some field theory, topological field theory, and this n is a dimension. So maybe I call it, I should call it d, but, but you, there will be an en operator, and usually you say en operator, not ed operator. So, so uh, this, this little graph in car is a set of graphs, is acted by some, some group. So the symmetric group in n letters acts by just permuting the. the uh, the, the, the labels on the vertices. Then you have action of SK by permuting the labels of the edges, and an action by S2 to the K by uh, permuting the direction of edges. And then we define the graph complex. The so graph complex subscript N will be defined as product over all capital N and K of a vector space spanned by the set gra and K. And here without marking it in the, in the, in the notation, I assume that, that a, a, a graph with, with so and so many edges and vertices is put in this degree. And then I take Invariance or co-invariance, it doesn't matter much, just two different notations. So co-invariance, let's say, under this group action. And here I, I, I fix certain sign conventions. I, I'm sorry to, for being a little bit pedantic about the signs, usually just keep, skip over, but it happened to me many times that later people would ask the question anyway, so I, 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 I just do it. So here uh, I say that I let Sn act by, by permutations of the, the decorations of the, of the vertices with sign if this um, little n here is odd. So you, you give the, the vertices an odd degree. So it's natural if you permute the labels on the vertices that you get a minus 1 if the permutation is odd. And these two things act by permutations of permutations of of uh, so maybe write it just like this. Sk acts by permuting edges with plus minus if n is even. That also makes sense because we assign in this case, an odd degree to the edges. So if I permute two edges, it should be, I should have a minus one. And, and one, one piece of the sign convention is that, that if n is odd, the permutation of the directions of, of the individual edges also comes with a certain sign. Um, for, for the moment being, if you, if you don't care about this so much, you can just ignore the details about the signs. But remember that, that here we define two different complexes, essentially, one for n even and one for n odd. So the signs uh, matter uh, modulo uh, 
uh, sorry, this is the n matters only module two with respect to the science. Well, let me let me give you a deep and then small so the small pen. Yeah. Small pen. yeah. And you, yeah so, so, so lowercase n uh, matters. And your k is changing form. Your k is changing form. It's changing form. Kids. Uh, yeah, script. Uh, and writing. It's kind of changing. Yeah. Age. Yeah. 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 S A to the power K. Yes, it should be K. So maybe, I, yeah, the students always complain when I write this K in my, my lecture, so maybe. Um, <laughs> so so, so let, let's just give some example. So, so elements of my, my complex are just some, some linear combinations of these um, yeah, isomorphism classes of graphs. For example, this one plus, I don't know, three half times this one, let's say. But uh, one thing to notice is that if, if the graph has an odd symmetry, and odd symmetry using these, these sign conventions there, then the graph is zero. So for example, for, for n even, we know that the, the edges are odd. And this one, this graph has a symmetry by interchanging two, two edges. So this has an odd symmetry, and this graph will be actually zero in GCN for n even. So, so it's important to, to keep in mind so that not all isomorphism graphs can appear, but only those with, with um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, let, let's, let, let's say k is, for all, for all that I, I will uh, talk about, let's say the characteristic of k is zero. But, but you're right for, for a characteristic, not two. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, so, so the important thing to notice is that if, if, whether n is even or odd gives you a different complex. So different, different isomorphism classes will, will be present in this complex and others not. And, and then there's a differential. Let me just give you the formula. So if you want to apply the differential to some graph gamma, what you do is you sum over all vertices of your graph. Then here's your graph. So here's, here's the vertex you have. And then you delete this vertex. In place of this vertex, you put uh, uh, two vertices connected by an edge, and then you sum over all ways of reconnecting these edges to these two vertices. And uh, these designs above have been chosen such that delta squares equal to zero, so you can you, you can check that with these signed conventions, uh, this equation holds. And, and then, the graph cohomology is just the cohomology of uh, this complex GCN with, with differential uh, delta. Is there any reason why in a definition take direct product and not direct sum? Yeah, there's some reason because I want certain statements that I'm going to um, present later uh, to be true. But but there's um, uh, <laughs> but, but there's um, um, there's um, no reason in the sense that I could have uh, equally well uh, taken a, a direct sum. So we will see. Maybe maybe it's a good remark. So. Maybe one remark. So, so this differential does not produce uh, bivalent uh, vertices, so vertices of valence two, if there were none before in the graph. So delta does not produce bivalent vertices if there were none, none before. So, so basically, when you 
let's say here I, I draw some portion of the graph, and now, now you split the vertices, so in principle you could, you could produce something like this, right? But, but an equivalent picture is also obtained, or the same picture is also obtained by, by splitting uh, this vertex. And if you, if you compute the signs here, you see that, that they are always such that these two terms cancel out. So it does not produce any bivalent vertices. And there is some, some result of proposition or theorem, which was already in, in Marx and Conservative's paper, that if you compute, if you want to compute this, the cohomology of this, this graph complex, it can be written as the cohomology of the, of the, of the at least trivalent part, so all vertices are required to, at least tri, to be at least trivalent, plus the part that is spent by, by, by um, graphs with all vertices bivalent. So, so these, these we call, let's say, wheel or, or loop graphs. Let's call this loop graphs L, um, L, L, M. And remember here we have M vertices. And, and here you have some more product. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't want to get into it. Let's say product so we don't have a discussion. Um, so, so M equivalent to, to N plus 1 mod 4. L, M. So you have you have um, uh, uh, those wheel graphs and a completely trivalent piece. F furthermore, is it the, the grading? It's that graded, yes. So the grading is the so, so degree is n times the number of vertices minus one, minus n times minus one times the number of edges. That's a degree of, of each graph. So formally, if you take a direct product, it's not a gradient, right? Uh, well, you can take a, let, let's call it a co complete grading. You will, you will, I mean, if you're a purist, you will call it a filtration. But in the definition of a graded vector space, replace direct sum by direct product. And, and I will, so the statement I'm, I'm going to make now, uh, now will probably um, uh, settle this. So, so So this delta preserves the Euler characteristic of the graph, right? I mean, betting number of the graph does not change if you split one vertex. So uh, that means that, that your, your complex decomposes into a direct product, according to my definition, of pieces for each uh, Euler characteristic. So, so GC n greater or equal to 3 to product of GC n greater or equal to 3 comma e where E runs over, where, where E denotes the Euler characteristic. And these pieces are actually finite dimensional. So actually, you have a direct product of finite dimensional complexes. And so the difficulties, whether you take direct products or direct sum, are, are then relatively um, non severe, right? So the, if you take cohomology of this, you take cohomology of every finite dimensional piece, and then afterwards you can take either direct sum or direct product. It doesn't matter much. Uh, yeah, and, and the main problem I want to talk about is this. Uh, what, what's the graph cohomology? Uh, it has been studied for a while, but, but currently nobody knows. Uh, we do not even have a conjecture of what it is. And, and I'm going to talk about some uh, uh, some constraints. I used to have a conjecture, but unfortunately it turned out to be wrong. So um, I'm going to take about, uh, talk about uh, um, some hints only. But let me maybe state one thing. So, so why, why should we care? So uh, here I presented it as some combinatorial game that you can play. But uh, many people considered it. And, and, and uh, why is it relevant to, to more grown-up mathematics, let's say? 
and the, the answer is that these um, graph complexes, so the GCN governs the deformation theory of EN operands. So, So, so more precisely, I write it a li little bit sloppily like this. So you can take a, some cofibrant replacement for this EN operat. You can take the, the complex of derivations and you compute its cohomology. And this can be expressed through, uh, this, um, through this graph uh, cohomology. So it's some, some um, completed symmetric product space in one class plus the graph cohomology up to some degree shifts that I, I will just insert. So, so here you have a, a, a degree shift by uh, n plus one units, and then you have to shift back afterwards. And you can, so, so here we take derivations in, in operats and uh, that's actually, it's impossible to see your uh, yeah, uh, that's kind of intentional because I don't regard them as very important. But but let me. Oh, and then you shift again by n plus one units afterwards. So s plus is completed. S plus means it, it's completed. And you don't have a, um, a zeros term. You don't have a k term. So does this require n is at least two? Ah, yes, uh, uh, certainly. Yes. The deformations of the associative operator are relatively trivial, so so I don't. And. Yes, quite recent result. Uh, which we obtained in, with, uh, in collaboration with Victor Turchin and Benoit Fress. Now, this looks a little bit odd that you have this big uh, product. And in fact, if you consider derivations not in operats, but in Hopf operats, be a little bit careful how to define this, then this is just the primitive part of what you see here. So this is the main motivation for studying this, this graph complex, because these EN operats are relatively um, uh, abundant. So whenever you have, a, have an EN operat in the theory, you, you're expected to see some shadow of its deformation theory in what you're doing. Sorry, what is half Yeah, so, 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 so I should be a little bit careful. So these EN operats exist in various versions. First of all, it's a topological operat, you, you can say, and then you take then you, you take um, uh, chains on this operat. So, so, uh, and here, by chains, I mean rational chains. I'm not over Z or anything. And uh, this will be an operat in, in DG vector spaces. And there you take a cofibrant replacement, takes the derivations in operats. But from the topology, because it's a topological operat, you, you get a little bit extra. You get a, get a, a co-product each, in each arity. And if you also consider this, and then um, you, your space of derivations changes slightly. So this is a, the, from the point of view of rational homotopy theory, this is a better object. But this is more complicated to compute. Um, okay. So, and the question is, if we, if we want to attack this, so we want to compute this open problem, how, how do we do this? How to get information? So, so one relatively simple source to get information is that you can derive certain degree bounds. And you can, you can, I mean, for, for each of these, P 
pieces of fixed Euler characteristic, you can get an upper and lower bound where the, where the cohomology lives. So, so in, in general, just from the fact that the graphs are at least trivalent, you get an upper bound. That's kind of trivial because there's just no, well, but the complex is just zero above a certain degree. And uh, so, so the bound you get for upper bound for H of uh, GCN greater or equal to three is fixed Euler characteristic. And the upper bound is that the degree has to be less or equal to E minus one times three minus n minus three. If I if I um, have computed this correctly, so, so here you will say it's it's very trivial, but already this gives us some interesting information, right? If if n is at least three, this is already negative degrees minus three, but that already tells us that these um, e n operats for n uh, at least three have very few automorphisms and there's, there are almost no uh, derivations in degree plus one. So plus one is where the, where the obstructions land if you want to construct maps, for example, a formality morphism. So this bound already tells you that the only possible classes there can come from these real classes. And you can check that at least... E is negative, negative yeah. E is positive. <coughs> No, E is positive. I thought it would be uh, Sorry, I... I yeah, I'm negative. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> First Bessie number? Yeah. I had it. Let's, let's say... First Bessie numbers. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're... you're yeah. My calculations I, I usually define as <laughs> E as number of number of edges minus number of vertices, but you're, you're completely correct. This, uh, um, is um, only correct up to sign. So, um, <clears throat> so this is interesting already, but you also get a uh, lower bound. And to obtain the lower bound, what you actually do is you, you take this more or less as a definition and you use a, a, a different model for the CN operator. If you use a different model, you get a, get a lower bound. I will not discuss it. So second source of information is you can always do computer experiments. Can you turn on the beamer? So the, the results I, I'm showing you are computer experiments mostly by um, Barnetan and McKay, and, and, and some are run by me. I also wrote a program. So I, uh, I don't know which of the numbers were computed by them and which by me, but let's just uh, look at it. This was and in the course of invalidating the Bible code. <laughs> Uh, this was invalidating the Bible code. I, I'm not. Ah, okay, yeah, that that may be. <laughs> so, uh, here I have taken n equal to two. As I already told you, we only have two cases to consider: n even or n odd. So I, I I just took two representatives of an even and an odd number. So for an even number, I, I allowed myself to take two, and for an odd number, I will take three in a second. So, here this is this is a picture for for n equal to two. So, so these are, are derivations of the E, E2 operat, if you wish. So, so this counts the, the genus. So the, I mean, genus is, or, I mean, if you're a graph theorist, then, then genus is not the right thing. So what I mean by genus is the first Betty number. So for me, genus is defined to be the, be the first Betty number. So here you have one loop, two loops, three loop, four loop, five loops. So for physicists, it's a loop order. So you have all these, these loop graphs we had before. They are spaced by four units, they, are, they live in loop order one. And then you have, have many things in, in higher loop orders. What, what you should um, uh, recognize or, or see is that in degree zero, we have many classes. Then there are some on this line, and, and there's one on this line. 
And then here, unfortunately, we cannot go on much further because it takes too much uh, computer time. Actually, uh, the thing, um, so what, what takes most of the time is not enumerating the, the, the isomorphism classes of graphs or setting up the differential, but actually uh, solving the linear system. So that's a bottleneck. It's not, not um, computing automorphisms of graphs. Uh, let me also show you the other slide here. It's um, yeah, in, in loop order one, you have, you have again your, your loop graphs. Here I, I, I omitted some numbers, so they are spaced by four units. Then most of the cohomology is, is in degree um, minus three. And then here there are some things in minus six. And, and these numbers are different, so it's not just the same, and there's also no obvious map between these two. Uh, I'm uh, confused, Thomas. This seems to contradict your upper bound for b equals 1. Uh, but, but here, n is equal to 3. Right, and then minus 3. The degree is less than or equal to minus 3. Yeah. But it's only for the non loop part, so here it's a at least trivalent part. Oh, and, and here it's in wheels. Oh, the, the left yeah, yeah these, these are just the wheel pieces. So th th that, uh, those we already, we, we have, always have. And, and here I indicated the, the bounds actually by this red line. So everything beyond these red lines must be zero except for these uh, wheel pieces. And can you switch it off again? So. Ah, maybe. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you switch it on again? Because there's one thing I wanted to show. Uh, so, so one thing. One thing we, we can explain is that, that line over here, uh, one showed that, that this line is just uh, this grotendieck teich muller lie algebra. So, so when we compute H0 of GC2, this is the same as the grotendieck teich muller lie algebra. And instead of giving you a definition, I, I tell you a conjecture about what it's supposed to be. So it's supposed to be, it's called the Dulin Grinfeld conjecture. What Lean Greenfeld Ihara conjecture it's supposed to be the completion of a free Lie algebra in generator sigma three, sigma five, sigma seven, and so on. And there was a very remarkable uh, theorem due to Francis Brown, who recently showed one half of this conjecture that G at least contains this. And if you if you look at this line over here. So here there's sigma 3. I mean, the, the, the number here, the sigma 3, sigma 5, is, uh, coincides with the loop order. So this is sigma 3, it's uh, uh, here, sigma 5. Here's sigma 7. Then you, you can make a bracket, sigma 3, sigma 5, is of loop order 8. So it lives here, uh, and so on. If you think you try to calculate commodity, which will be generators of this algebra, so they can make complex. Yeah, so I, I can give you there's an explicit formula for this, these elements in the graph complex. No, 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 I mean, uh, because it should be simply complex with commodity just in the degree 3, 5, 7, 7, yeah? Because for any Lie algebra, can make uh, this, can do bar, constru bar construction. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you plug this graph in this bar construction. Yeah, I tried that, but, but I, I, I couldn't. Couldn't show that it's actually just the generators. Yeah. Yeah. So the Chevalier complex is relatively difficult. I, I don't. But maybe I was too stupid. I don't, I don't know. But, but you, you, you not only have uh, GRT, you have other. In fact, three, seven, 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 seven. Yeah. Yes, you have things above. And yeah, one, one famous conjecture due to uh, Maxim Konsevich and independently Drinfeld is that here in the first line you have all zeros. Fortunately, you couldn't show that, so you had to create uh, this approach to deformation quantization that I did my PhD thesis on. So, um, okay. Yeah. Now, can you switch it off? So if you want to get some further information, you, you can get it by the following 
root So on these graph complexes, you have some, some extra algebraic structures. Uh, the, the most trivial you see, or, or I mean, not, not the most trivial, but one you see by this realization is, is derivation. So there's a Lie algebra structure. And it is obtained as follows. So if you have two graphs, gamma and gamma prime, and you want to take their bracket, you, you take the commutator with respect to some pre Lie product. And to compute this, what you do is you sum over all vertices of gamma. So here's gamma. Here's the vertex V of gamma. Then you delete this vertex, you plug in gamma prime instead, and you reconnect the edges in all possible ways. It is, well, it uses the same uh, algebraic uh, structures, actually. So, so the dual thing is just you identify a subgraph, you contract it, and you take it out. It's just that. Here we, we encode the same structure a little bit differently. Here you have a DGD structure, the Kronkreimer, they set up some, some Hopf algebra. So, so for me, this is a little different. So the, the main uh, difference is that, that here, uh, this is for topological field series. And the difference is that you have a differential. You don't have a differential in the Kronkreimer story. So, so this gives you a way to, to cook up at least co-cycles from known co-cycles by just taking their brackets. But you have a priori no way of knowing that these co-cycles are non-trivial. And actually, the differential can be, can be written as a bracket with the mora cato element, which is a two-vertex graph. And one more thing you can note is that there's an extra mora cato element, let's say up to a degree. Namely, you, you can consider this graph just a, a tadpole, if you wish, for physicists. And you can, you can check that. Yeah, so it's a, it's a <laughs> tadpole who narrowly escaped the, the fish. And, and you, you, you have these, these equations over here. And this means that you can define a new differential, which is just the sum of these two. And to, to make it the right degree, let's, let's take, for my even number, let's take 0 instead of 2. So we consider GC0. We define the differential bracket. With, with this more tournament over here. And, and then relatively a not so deep statement, let's just call it proposition, is that h of gc0 with this extra differential, let's call it delta tilde, is one dimensional with just this, this um, representative, uh, with just this, this um, um, one class represented by the tadpole. So, so it means that, that adding or, or deforming the differential like this kills almost all cohomology. But, but this gives you information, because in order to compute this, you, you, you may take a spectral sequence the other direction. That in the first page of the spectral sequence, you take, for, for example, take the spectral sequence on, on the genus. And then this changes the genus by one. That leaves the genus invariant. So on the first page, you just have the ordinary cohomology. And then you have on the extra pages, you will see things that, that uh, turn by turn kill all cohomology except for this. 
So what you learn from this is that all cohomology classes that are there have to come in pairs. They have to come in pairs and they have to kill each other out. So. By taking spectral sequence on genus, cohomology classes have to cancel in pairs. For even n. First of all, there's a, an analog story for odd n. I will. Can you can you turn it on again? So, so, so let's see how it goes, and I, I can just tell you so, so by just looking at the degrees and, and where where these classes live. You, you see here you have your you have your Grotnik Teichmüller Lie algebra, which is conjecturally free. Here you have the real classes. Now, if you, uh, well, what you can show is, um, let me maybe write it as a proposition or a remark. The, the loop in, in the spectral sequence, you can show that, that these, these loop classes, so, so um, things we have on this line exactly have to kill the generator of GRT. So this I found uh, quite, quite a nice picture actually, uh, quite uh, pretty. So, so we know that for example, maybe I, I can give you one example to make you believe it. Hmm. If I have enough time, so I have time until 15 minutes past six, oh, okay, right. That, that's very good. To motivate this remark, just just make make one quick calculation. So, so the sigma three, uh, three, just believe me, is represented by this graph over here. Well, we can start with the five field. This is the first uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five non-trivial one, and let's just check where it goes under the spectral sequence. So this is not closed under this extra differential coming from here. So if I take bracket with this, I add an extra edge, so I get up to a prefactor, which I omit, I get this. Now, this is exact under the other differential, and you can check it's, it's up to prefactor, it's, it's killed by this. And now, if I apply this differential again, I just get this. So, so I've just shown that this uh, uh, five loop kills this sigma three. Anyway, so, so here you have, you have these, these loops, they, they kill the generators. And uh, you, you can see that in GRT, not everything is a generator. You have a lot of brackets also. And these brackets are killed by whatever is above. So for example, here's the first bracket. This is sigma, a bracket of sigma 3 and sigma 5. And you can check it's, it's killed by something in, in degree 3. Actually, this something, you can give a formula, right? So, so sigma 3 is killed by killed by this 5 loop L5, so, so the bracket will be killed by L5 bracket with sigma 5. So this is, this is, oh sorry, this is what you see here. And similarly, you, you can just check and these classes all match. So, so these classes here correspond exactly to brackets in here. Also here you have a higher bracket, I think this course, this, I mean, I don't really know because, yeah, but, but this should correspond to, um, um, the commutator, this should kill the commutator of sigma 5 and sigma 9. So um, f from this, this picture and this extra differential and this result, uh, you get a very nice picture. You can explain all the graph cohomology that has ever been computed. So, so very nice. We have had a very good conjecture. I already started writing a paper about it, but um, uh, yeah. I will talk about it in, in one second, unfortunately not in a very positive way. Um, but, but let me also uh, spend two minutes about uh, the odd case. So this was all for the n even case. What about the, the odd case? So on the line zero, you have uh, this uh, classes which relates to GT. And so they relate to some numbers, like multiples that are value numbers. Yes. And so uh, is there any relation to any kind of 
periods so or... it's not a number so like you should be form of high degree of low dimensional cycle yes yes, yes. It, should, it should be i mean okay. some analytic object in, in the higher case maybe it's not, something it's maybe maybe it's not all geometric maybe it's not <coughs> geometric it maybe it's just combinatorial game not what we motives yeah Higher cycles, I, I can't say. I mean, there, there are some. So for, for n odd, you actually have a different, you have a very similar story. Namely, you can deform your, your original Morakato element in, in, in this manner to another Morakato element. So here you have uh, sums over all um, graphs with two vertices and an odd number of edges connecting them. So for example, for, for j equal to 0, you just recover this graph, which was given the, the Morakato element, which, which yields your original differential, and the rest will be some perturbation. And uh, again, the nice thing is you can show a proposition that if you take a cohomology of GC1 with this other differential, this is also one-dimensional uh, and, and spent by, well, I, I, write, I mean, this is just a leading order term, but spent by one, one class. And, and you, can, you can check that uh, also for, for n equal to 3, you, you observe these cancellations. So, so I mean, if you, if you know that this is 0, then by the same trick, taking some spectral sequence, you will, will see that all classes come in pairs. And, and for example, you have these loop classes here. And, and um, I, I, can, I can check up to a certain degree. You can, you can, you can just rule out um, that, that they cancel anything below the line minus 3, so they, they cancel something here. On, on this uh, minus three line. Ah, sorry, this is for, for n equal to three. So here I choose a different representative of an odd number than, than this one over here. But it, it, it should not confuse you, yeah? And, and one question or one, one conjecture is that these wheels always cancel something on, on this line minus three, but I can't show it. So I don't have, a, have, a, have, a, have an analog of this remark in the odd case. Also the question is, I mean, uh, in, in the even case, the, the guys that are cancelled by these, 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 these loops, they had a special, special meaning. These were conjecturally generators of this group. Uh, what's the special meaning of the classes that you find here? I, I don't know. Given that you have a, I mean, a priori infinite sum there, is it even clear that it cancels, that it only maps to a finite part? Or? Uh, yeah, you have to be very careful how, that you, you complete right, and, and yes. I mean, it's a valid concern, absolutely. But, uh, but but uh, if, if you just yeah yeah compare these things and, and you see uh, this kills kill something on the minus three line minus three line kills something below. Yeah, and this minus three line is it related to residual covariance? Uh, um, uh, not not uh, yeah of of um, of three manifolds so of rational homology fields. This, this is what this is. Yes. Yeah. Can, can, can you say precisely? It's finite invariance of yeah. So this is dimensions of no dimensions. Yes, yeah. so these are the dimensions. Yes. And and so, so these things are well studied and, and but but I think there's no no formula for what the dimension is, right? There's no. Okay. Anyway, so here we have a nice conjecture of what this graph cohomology is. So in every case you have one kind of here's your first conjecture that I raised. In every case that you have one dominant degree where most of the cohomology is, plus you have certain things that, that, that I mean, they're, they're partners in the other dimensions. So here you have, it never happens that, for example, something below cancels something below. It always happens that something cancels something on this line or something on this line cancels something else. 
So you kind of have, have two copies of whatever is here. So that was my conjecture. Uh, but um, uh, have five minutes, then maybe I can I can make. Yeah, no, no I don't make one more conject one more uh, remark. Um, but then there's a different source of information, namely you can. And you can you can count graphs, right? Graphs are just some combinatorial objects, and the combinatorial lists they have been, um, I mean, they have invented methods for for counting uh, graphs uh, long ago. So, so other source of information. Can, one can count the graphs, so, so count the, the dimensions of uh, the, these uh, graph complexes and, and compute the Euler characteristic. Maybe, maybe one remark is, of course, not, not my idea, so this Euler characteristic. There have, have been previous work, for example, for, for, for other types of graph complexes, so for the ribbon graph complexes. A nice formula for the Euler characteristic has been obtained by Getzel and Kapranov. And um, for, for the graph complex, we care about formulas for um, the, 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 how to call it, a virtual Euler characteristic. So virtual Euler characteristic means that you count a graph by a weight one over the symmetry group of, one over the, the size of the symmetry group of this graph. has been computed by, by Maxim Fonsevich also. But, but now uh, we, don't want, we don't want this virtual Euler characteristic. And the reason is that there are far too many graphs with symmetry. So it, it's true that, that in, in, <laughs> in high dimensions, it's, it's, um, so of course, most graphs don't have symmetry. So the number of graphs with symmetry is roughly, like, I don't know, square root of the number of all graphs. But the, the cohomology is much, much smaller than this. So we will see some, some uh, tables. Um, soon, so so we really don't we don't want this this counting by one over the, the the symmetry group, but really we want to count these isomorphism classes of of graphs, and you can do it. Given that I have three minutes of time, um, I, I think I will just give you the formula. <laughs> so so here we make a generating function for the number of graphs essentially. Here, I mean, the, the notation here I, I took from our paper, it doesn't quite match with, with what I said before. So, so read number of, of graphs, number of um, isomorphism classes of graphs without these odd symmetries and without uh, vertices of, of wellens uh, less or equal to uh, two. And, and you can, you can there, by the standard combinatorial tricks, essentially you can compute these generating functions. They are relatively complicated, but if you compare with this uh, Polyas function for for, um, for, for counting the number of simple graphs, it's very similar. So you have the sum over partitions. And then in, in this polya function or, or, or polya formula, there is, uh, at this, I mean, there is one, one, one piece which, which is kind of linear with, with uh, I mean, linear power in this, this, these j's, and, and one piece which is, which is quadratic in these this j's that, that form the partition. And the only difference is that, that here, in the, in the simpler formula, there's just some very simple polynomial, like 1 minus st to the something. And, and here, it's, it's replaced by, by some, let's say, in a physics language, dressed version of, 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 of edges using, using this q pochama symbol. And, and then there's some vacuum piece, if you want to call it like this. Anyway, I, I can't see much in this formula, so I just skip over it but you can feed it to the computer and say, compute me the number of the dimensions, compute me the Euler characteristics. And this is what comes out. Yeah, but then you need many, more, more variables, yeah? Take some of more. Yes, here you have some of many variables, so it's computationally expensive. So I hope it's not the best formula you can find. Actually, I hope you can find a simpler thing. Is, is odd the n-odd case, or is it? Yes, odd is n-odd. 
Yes. And, um, yeah. And this is what, you, what the computer finds. So we, we computed it, so this B is a, is a loop order. We computed it up to loop order 30. And uh, so, so here everything looks fine. Now the problem is, if you go to a very high loop order, these numbers grow, grow much too fast. If you, if you just uh, uh, believe this conjecture about the grotendieck teich muller Lie algebra, this cannot explain these high numbers over here. So, so my conjecture, uh, therefore, is unfortunately false. And uh, even more unfortunately, it appears that, that it really, I mean, really in high degrees, you have to, uh, you, you see how false it is. But the problem is, if you, for example, here in loop order 30, uh, um, so number of graphs is a number with 50 digits or, one, or something, so, so you, you cannot uh, expect to compute anything on the computer in this, this, this regime. Also, something that's very interesting is, if you, if, you see the, if you remember the tables I had before, this n even and n odd case, they look very different, actually, in, in, in low degrees. Right? So, so, so even and odd uh, theory of this n operator seems to be very different. But if you go to high dimensions, these numbers are almost the same up to a conventional sign. So the sign here is pu pure convention. You can, you can get rid of it. But otherwise, these numbers are, are, are very similar. So what this picture actually suggests is that, that the process I, I, I conjectured before is only one piece of it. So there's one process and there seems to be some other process uh, contributing the bulk of the, of the cohomology classes, which is the same in, in, in both cases. And, and um, another feature that is quite astonishing is the sign. So, so here I really pushed my student to make sure that his program was correct because I couldn't believe it. So I, I thought before, yeah, well, high dimensions maybe, uh, you see this is contributed by some graphs, some family of graphs without symmetry, so they appear in both complexes, and maybe something stupid like, like all trivalent graphs or, or something like this. But in, in that case, this can't explain this strange flipping of signs. So the, the signs, the, they do not flip like every second time, but, but well, somehow, I don't know. Right, so this is really not not explainable, and and and. Does it mod four? What? Mod four something? No. 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 Yeah. Just to take. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so just take these sums. Take yeah. the sums. Yeah. Get rid of them. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's a, that's a very very interesting thing. So so it means that that uh, yeah. That, so the conjecture is that in, uh, there are many classes which appear in even and odd case, and and I don't really know how. But their signs also don't have any regularity. Yeah, yeah. The sign, the sign. Also has random signs. Yeah. Yes. Like. Yeah. So. so um, so unfortunately now I, have, I don't have time to <laughs> explain why it is the case. <laughs> no, I, I, honestly, I, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know why, why this happens. And, and, and this is a, the question I have to leave open. So, so that's the end. And, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for your attention. Can I ask a stupid question? Do you, yeah. do you, can you explain why the signs are opposite? Uh, this, is just a, this is just a convention. You see, they, they're. Um, if, if you. But they uh, both switch at the same. Even if you have, I mean, you have a convention, but they both switch at the same time. So why do they tend to be the same? If you, want, if you change the convention, why are the signs the same? Yeah, that's a question, yes. So, 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 the, the, so the conjecture is that there are many classes which appear both in the even and in the odd complex. So for example, given by graphs which don't have symmetry. That would be one conjecture, but I don't know. Maybe, but, but I mean, the number of graphs with symmetry in these loop orders is, is much, much larger than these numbers. So we cannot really say, uh, I mean, of course, most graphs don't have symmetry. Uh, yeah? Can you try taking the plastic logarithm and see if that's easier to? to conjecture something about. No, no. Um, well, that should be maple, little maple. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of computation resources do you use to get this power? Uh, kind of so you mean how long it, it, it took? 
so my, my student wrote some program. I don't know how optimal this is, but but uh, I think for loop order 30, it, it ran for a few days or something. Just one PC, yeah? Yeah, yeah, just one PC. Yeah. I have to some Mexican computer. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we don't have. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, no, no, we, we don't have. We don't use supercomputers. No, no. Um. You said something about the beginning about getting a new proof of formality of E3 operators. Uh, yes, that should should follow. From, I mean, I don't. I didn't want to be too um, too precise about this because it's really work in progress. And, and in order to, I mean, the statement that it would follow is that, that the, the n operats for n, at least three, are intrinsically formal. So that means when you have a Hopf operat that, is, that has cohomology little e n, then it is uh, quasi isomorphic to the n operat. And, and this is what should follow. Um, there are a few technical points. So the most important thing is that you have to set up the deformation theory for these Hopf operats correctly and the obstruction theory. And that's why I don't want to make too bold statements, because it's it's relatively it's technically relatively complicated. So we use Benoit Fres formalism for this, but it, it really it's not easy. And, and I, I wanted to avoid having to answer technical questions about this at the end. But but that, that is what it says. So so you um, yeah yeah one one small thing uh, to note is that sometimes there can be some cohomology in degree one, but but uh, you see you see n operats they have a they have a flip action you can you can let's say flip one dimension and, and these extra classes they are odd and I think that that shows they cannot be hit. This computation via spectral sequence or uh, this computation is just taking this formula and expanding <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so.